Japan is one of the top travel destinations amongst most people and that's not surprising as Japan's sheer number of activities from its attractions to its scenic views to its food is almost unmatched. Japan is the travel intern's most frequently visited country and we've been everywhere from its high-tech mega cities to its quiet countryside. There is an abundance of choice in Japan and there is something for any and every kind of traveler. Japan is a country of contrast and thus it can be a little bit difficult choosing where and how to spend your precious time here. So, we wanted to share our own experiences and our favorite things to do by creating this travel guide. Hi, hello, my name is Clarence and in this video I will be covering what I believe is the ideal way of traveling Japan. There are so many things to do here and it's near impossible to squeeze them all into one video so today I'll just be covering the more popular destinations and the highlights to do over there. And if you'd like a more detailed itinerary with proper budget breakdowns, there are guides in the description. We have budget guides, we have a 30-day backpacking guide that covers 12 cities. We even have a Michelin food guide. So yeah, go check them out. And yeah, pack your bags, let's get started. To start off, we arrive in Japan via plane and land in Tokyo. The first thing you might want to hit up is your accommodation. Japan is a highly developed country, but that doesn't mean it has to be expensive. There are many affordable accommodation options, but a unique one would be a capsule hotel experience. You get a little cube all to yourself, and honestly, that's all you really need because you're not spending all your time at the hotel, you're out there exploring. Tokyo is a good mix between the super modern and the super ancient. One example of the super ancient would be the Sensoji Temple, Tokyo's oldest Buddhist temple. It is massive, it's flanked by huge lanterns, there are beautiful ceiling paintings, there are statue of deities, you can cleanse at the small stone fountain and then get your fortune reading at the shrine. And you can even dress up in a kimono and take some photos there. They're really great for IG shots. And while you're dressed up, hop on a rickshaw for a different view of the city. And speaking of views, we cannot miss out on the iconic Shibuya Crossing, probably the busiest crosswalk in the world. You might want to hit up high if you want to grab some sick shots of the crossing. Tokyo is also the land of the quirky. There is this robot restaurant. It offers not only a dining experience, it also features some pretty out of this world performances. There are robots, there are dinosaurs, there's lasers, there's lights, there's loud music. It's always a good time. Okay, I always try to sneak in this attraction every time I talk about Japan. I'm talking about a bar called Kagaya Bar. Okay, I don't want to share too much to spoil the experience, but I'll tell you this. Okay, the menu is written in crayon. The cups vibrate when you pick them up. And there are, let's say, exotic performances every single time you order a drink. It's a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but okay, if that's not your thing, then you can head over to the Quran Sake Market for some free flow sake. You can choose from a hundred different kinds of Japanese rice wine that even have more unique flavors like mango, matcha, milk. But if I were you, I'd be really careful because they are really, really easy to drink. They, you don't taste the alcohol at all. And before leaving Tokyo, do stop by the Akihabara region. It is known as the Electric Town and it's famous for anime, manga and cosplay. And while you're there, do check out the massive Don Quixote Mega Store. It's a great place for souvenirs. You'll find a lot of weird stuff over there. It's just an all-around fun time. And after touring Tokyo, you can also take a trip to the nearby prefecture of Fuji and climb the iconic Mount Fuji. The hike can be completed within a day, but we do recommend training up just a little bit before you do a summit climb. And a cute souvenir for you to bring home is your hiking stick. You can get your hiking stick stamped at each rest point you come across. Pro tip, if you don't like hikes, head over to Lake Kabaguchiko for some great views of Mount Fuji. And also stop by to get the blueberry soft serve. It makes the mountain views that much sweeter. But for even better views of Mount Fuji, head over to Fuji Q. It houses the world's steepest roller coaster drop at 121 degrees. Good luck, because never gonna take that. And after spending a few days in Tokyo and Fuji, pack your bags and hop on at Shinkansen. It is going to take us to the ancient city of Kyoto. 
You can check out the Japan Rail Pass if you're planning to take a Shinkansen multiple times or if you're planning to jump from city to city. A quick guide on how to make the most out of your Shinkansen experience will be in the description below. So getting around Japan is actually really, really easy thanks to its highly connected transportation network. I'd stay away from taxis though because they tend to be a little bit more pricey. All you need is an IC card which will work in most of Japan's largest cities. They're mostly used for public transportation but you can also use them in certain stores and even vending machines. But I digress, yes, Kyoto. Kyoto is very different compared to the neon lit streets of Tokyo. Its history and tradition comes out a lot more in this city. One of its most notable landmarks is the Fushimi Inari Shrine, famous for its thousands of Tori gates. Each of them donated for gratitude or hope for good luck. And if you're up for more natural scenery, head over to the Arashiyama area and there you will find the Arashiyama Bamboo Grove. But do come here early if you want to beat the crowds. The Nishiki Market is also a great place to check out. It houses hundreds of small little stores and it is here where you get to taste some great local food. And if you want to check out the more cultural side of things, we recommend that you check out the Kiyomizu Dera Temple, the Tenryuji Temple and the Gion District. And now that you've seen the beautiful city of Kyoto, make a quick stop by the small prefecture of Nara. Its main attraction is the Nara Park, or more commonly known as the Nara Deer Park. Because, you know, deer. <laughs> Alright, when you're done playing with all the deer, jump on a train and head to Osaka next. Osaka is pretty much all about drinking and eating the night away. Probably the most well-known area of Osaka is Deltonbori. Explore the Tombori and you'll very soon get stressed out over all the food options there are. Dropping you a little food montage. <laughs> Don't worry if you're on a budget because there are many affordable food options around. Most of them are under a thousand yen. And we have a video to the 11 must-eats of Osaka. Do check it out. So yeah, I promise you, you will not go hungry unless you choose to. Places that we recommend are Fukutaro Okonomiyaki, Beef Cutlet Tekiru, and Hanuma Ruken Ramen. That was really hard to say. And when you're done eating, do check out the ancient Osaka Castle before spending a full day out at Universal Studios Japan. As for other activities to spend your time with, do check out the Osaka Aquarium the Momofuku Instant Ramen Museum, as well as the Shinshaibashi Shopping District. And that pretty much marks the end of our Japan travel guide. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to squeeze in other amazing cities like Hokkaido, Hiroshima, and Okinawa. But I hope at the very least, you've gained some helpful information and maybe just a little bit of inspiration to plan your next trip to Japan. So just a reminder, again, there are a bunch of itineraries and guides in the description below. Do check it out. And as always, friends, thank you so much for watching through to the end of the video. Leave a like if you liked it. And if you want to see more travel guides and stupid vlogs, do consider subscribing to our channel. We will see you in the next one. I'm gonna walk myself up frame. <laughs> Bye.